Hello world! In today's video, I'll be using the multimeter to carry out some of the basic measurements. Using a multimeter can seem overwhelming at first, but with some initial guidance and a bit of practice and patience, you can use it like a pro in no time. So I'll be covering the following measurements in this video. Now, if you are an absolute beginner or just looking to brush up your skills, then this is the right video for you. And towards the end of this video, there's a little bit of surprise. We'll be measuring voltage across a potato. Yes, you heard that right. We'll measure voltage across a potato battery. So I'd suggest watch the complete video once and when you play it the second time, grab your multimeter and start measuring all the quantities along with me. So there is a display, there is a knob, and with this multimeter, we can measure voltage, resistance, continuity, etc. We'll look at each and every function one by one. There are three jacks or ports over here, and for most of the times, we'll be using the COM port, to which I'll connect the black lead, and the V ohms milliamps port, to which I'll connect the red lead. Now, this is not a rule, it's just a convention. And there is a 10 ampere port. We'll look at the role of that one sometime later. Right now, we'll be using just the lower two ones as discussed. Now, let's measure the voltage. For that, you have to switch on the multimeter and turn the dial towards the voltage function. And you can select the highest range when you aren't too sure about the range and then lower it down if required. Here, I've got a brand new battery and I'll be checking the voltage of this one. And I have selected 200 volts right now. Let's just see what is the value that we are getting. And here I'm getting 9.7 volts. So let me just lower down the range to see if it makes any difference to the value. And with that, we are still getting 9.7 volts, which is cool. Now, let's just switch the probes and touch the negative side of the battery with the red probe and the positive side with the black one to see if there is any change in the value. So as you can see, I'm getting the same value, but there is a negative sign over here. So that's a good way to test the polarity of the battery. Now, I have also got a tiny solar panel and this one can give me approximately six volts. But it is evening right now, so let me take the panel near the window to see if it is making any difference. So currently it is giving me approximately 3 volts and I haven't soldered any wires yet, so I'm holding the panel a little awkwardly over here. But yeah, it is giving me approximately 3 volts. Now we'll measure resistance. For that I've connected a resistor on the breadboard. I've done this purely for the sake of convenience. If your resistor is laid out in a circuit, then you should remove it from the circuit and then measure its value. So I'll start with the highest range, that is 2000K, and switch to a lower one if required. So now I'm getting zero, which means this is a low value resistor. So I'll switch to a lower range, that is 200K. So now I'm getting 0.3. I'll switch to 20K to see if that makes any difference. So now I'm getting 0.33, so I'll switch to 2000 ohms to see if I get a more precise value. So that's 327 ohms. It's a 330 ohm resistor, but there's always 5% tolerance in the value of resistances, so that's fine. Next, we are going to measure the value of yet another resistor. I'll place it on the breadboard. I find this a lot more convenient. So I'll start with 2000K, that is the highest available range. And I'm getting 1055, it's a one mega ohm resistor. You can also measure the value by placing the resistor in your hands, but I just don't prefer that because if you're not cautious and if you touch the resistor on both the sides with your hands, then your body's resistance interferes with the measurement. So you should not touch it on one side. As you can see here, I'm not touching the black probe. And then you will get the value. So we'll take one more resistor and measure its value. Again, we'll start with 
2000 k that is the highest available range and lower down if required so it says 100 k i'll lower it down to see if that makes any difference whether it is indeed 100 k so it is giving me 99.8k which is approximately 100k so let's lower it down further to check if that makes any difference so we are putting it on 20k and this is a 100k resistor so you get one which is above limit so nothing drastic happens you just have to switch to next available higher range and then you get your value next we are going to check for continuity and for that i've got this wire So this is the continuity mode you can see the speaker sign over there so diode testing and continuity are provided in the same place so before checking for continuity let's check the resistance of this wire so continuity simply means that between two points there should be minimal amount of resistance or zero resistance so let's place the probes on the two ends of the wire and check the resistance that we get it is around 1.4 ohms which is hardly anything So these two points are obviously connected. So I'll switch to continuity mode to check whether we get a beep or not. So we are getting a beep over here, which means there is continuity. So whenever there is continuity, you will hear a beep, and whenever there is no continuity, which means there is resistance between two points, you will not get to hear that sound. So here I've got a PCB board. and these three points over here they are for ground so let's check if there is continuity between them so you can hear a beep which means these points are connected so just like that you can take any pcb board and check if two points that are supposed to be connected whether they are connected or not by using the continuity function you'll end up using this function a lot on this multimeter in fact you'll also end up using it to check with the two points that are not supposed to be connected in a circuit like uh, vcc and ground whether they are connected or not whether there is any short circuit or not so there is one thing that you should keep in mind whenever you are using this mode that is continuity mode your system shouldn't be powered on all right you have to switch off the power otherwise you may cause damage to the circuit or you may cause damage to yourself in extreme cases so you don't want to do that so always switch off the power and then check for continuity So this is our diode the silver strip that you see on the right hand side is cathode and on the left side the black part is anode so we'll place the diode on the table and my multimeter is still in continuity slash diode testing mode and I'll touch the red probe to anode and black one to cathode and we are getting some value so if this value is in the range of 0.5 to 0.8 it means the diode is working fine in forward pass condition If I switch the position of the probes, then I'm getting one. So in the reverse bias condition, I'm getting one or open, which means this diode is working as expected. Next, I'm going to get an LED. So this is a red LED, and the small leg is cathode, and the longer one is anode. I'll be connecting it on the breadboard, and we will again check if this LED is working fine or not. So let's. First of all connect the black one to cathode and the red probe to anode. As you can see the LED has lighted up so which means it's working fine. Let's switch the position of the probes and we're not getting any light anymore. So this LED is working absolutely fine. Now while testing the normal diode we saw some value on the multimeter, right? So comment down what was that value? was it the value of resistance current or was it voltage and also provide reasons for your answers so you can drop the answers in the comments section and if you want to know what is the answer i'll be providing it on my linkedin uh, account so do follow me over there as well so i'll be providing the answers in a few days time so yeah that's the diode testing function along with the continuity function So I'm still going to keep my multimeter 
on the same setting that is the continuity slash the diode testing mode i'm still going to keep it on the same mode and now we are going to check whether our transistor is npn or pnp so first of all let's look at the diagram of a transistor which is say npn transistor so here you can see that the middle side is positive and the two extremes are negative so if i connect the negative probe of my multimeter to either extremes and the positive probe to the middle side then i should get some value if it's an npn transistor if it is a pnp transistor i shouldn't get any value and similarly if it is a pnp transistor and if i keep the negative probe in the middle and the positive probe on either side then i should get some value if it's a pnp transistor if it's an npn transistor i will not get any value so keeping the same logic in mind now let's test whether this particular transistor is npn or pnp so i am going to first of all place the red probe on one extreme and the negative probe in the middle so i'm not getting any value i'll switch the position of the probes and as you can see now i'm getting some value so i'll now place the black probe on the other side the red one i'll still keep it in the middle and we are again getting the value which means this is an npn transistor next we have square wave function um as far as basics are concerned we won't be covering this particular function as of for now but i will definitely make a separate video on this uh, function and uh, if you don't want to miss out on that then subscribe to the channel next we are going to measure the hfe of the transistor for that switch on the multimeter and as far as possible always switch it on by turning the knob in the anti clockwise direction and not in the clockwise direction and turn the knob towards the hfe function next get the transistor now you can find out if it is an npn transistor or pnp by referring to its data sheet or by carrying out the test that i recommended before and then you can find out which pin corresponds to base which one corresponds to collector and which corresponds to emitter and depending on that over here you can see the circle so you can insert the transistor in the appropriate slots so this is an npn transistor so i'm inserting it on the left hand side of the circle and uh, you can see that there is collector base emitter uh, slots that are provided so i'm just inserting it in the appropriate slots and then i'm getting around 345 as the value of gain so that's how you can carry out hfe measurement so before checking the current let's just check voltage across various components in the circuit so i've connected an led and a current limiting resistor and i'm supplying 3.3 volts over here so i'll switch on the multimeter and i'll select a uh, 20 volts range because we are supplying 3.3 volts and now first of all i'll check the voltage drop across the led which is around 2.13 volts now let's just check voltage across this 330 ohms current limiting resistor it's around 1.16 volts so it pretty much sums up to 3.3 volts so let's just check the voltage across the circuit and it is 3.3 volts so that's how you can check the voltage across various components in your circuit if you aren't too sure about the value of the current that you're going to measure then start with the 10 ampere port that is place the red lead inside the 10 amperes port and if you see that the value appears to be less than 200 milliamperes then you can always switch back and put the red lead inside the v ohms milliamperes port and then you can get a more precise value so for most of the breadboard based projects the value of current wouldn't exceed 200 milliamperes so you can place the red lead inside the v ohms milliampere port but when you aren't too sure about the value of the current and you think that it can exceed 200 milliamperes then in that case you should always place the red lead inside the 10 amperes port now in order to measure the current i've turned the knob towards 200 milliamperes 
and I've placed the red lead inside the V ohms milliampere port. Now in order to measure the current you have to connect the multimeter in series with the circuit. So I'll be connecting it in between the LED and the resistor which simply means that I'll be touching one probe of the multimeter to the resistor and the other to one leg of the LED. So with that our multimeter will be in series with the circuit and we are getting around 5.1 milliampers. So now I'll switch to 20 milliampers and let's see if we can get a more exact value of the current. So now I'm getting around 4.97 milliampers, which is around 5 milliampers. So yeah, that's how you measure the current by placing the multimeter in series with the circuit and for voltage, it will be connected in parallel or across the component. So now I'm going to measure the voltage across this potato battery. For that, I've inserted a copper coin and a galvanized nail inside the potato and they both are going to act like two electrodes of this battery. Note that they both are in close proximity with each other but they aren't touching each other and that's very important. And the phosphoric acid inside the potato acts like an electrolyte. So I'm expecting something around 1 volts or so. And that's why I've turned the knob of the multimeter towards 20 volts range. So let's check what voltage do we get now. And you just have to be a little bit patient. And we're getting around 0.96 volts, which is kind of like 1 volts. So what do you think will happen if I boil the potato? Do you think the value of the voltage will increase? Or will it decrease? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.